Today we're going to be talking about the dark side of being a celebrity. There's a lot of questionable business that goes on behind the curtain in the world of entertainment. And today we're counting down some mysterious cases involving celebrities. I'm your host James and these are the top 10 disturbing celebrity mysteries that remain unsolved. And we're starting off this list with Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood was an actress who started out her career as a child acting in her first film in 1943 but she would continue filming movies into her early 40s, acting in sometimes as much as three movies a year. She's probably most famous for playing Maria in West Side Story. The last movie she starred in, along with Christopher Walken, was Brainstorm. Filming took place in 1981, and before the film was even finished, she would die under mysterious circumstances. Wood, along with her husband Robert Wagner, co-star Christopher Walken, and Dennis Davern, who was the captain of the boat, went on a weekend boat trip to Santa Catalina Island on the evening of November 28th. The following morning, Natalie's body was discovered a mile away from the boat. Close by was an inflatable dinghy. It's never been officially determined what happened the previous night. Davern claimed that there had been an intense argument between Wagner and Natalie that night over her relationship with Christopher Walken. There were also bruises found on her body and two people who had been on a nearby boat claimed they had heard screams that night. Ultimately though, Natalie Wood's death was ruled an accidental drowning. Next we have Thelma Todd. Thelma Todd was an actress who acted in over a hundred films between 1926 and 1935. You'll probably remember her best for her role as Amelia Frisbee in the 1934 comedy smash hit Hips Hips Hooray. No? Alright, well, you gotta get up to speed on your on your film knowledge. I guess. In 1935, Todd was found slumped over the wheel of her car, which was parked in her friend's garage. Jewel Carmen, who was a former wife of Thelma's partner at the time, Roland West. Her death was determined to have been caused by carbon monoxide poisoning. The engine wasn't running though, and there looked to be signs of trauma to her neck, like someone had shoved a hose into it or something. To this day, it's never been determined what exactly happened. Roland West was a suspect for a while, along with Thelma's former husband and a gangster named Lucky Luciano, but there was not enough evidence to ever convict anyone. So in the end, this was determined to be simply an accident. Number eight, Brittany Murphy. A lot of you probably know who Brittany Murphy is. She appeared in tons of movies and shows throughout the 90s and 2000s. Clueless, Eight Mile, she was in Sin City, a huge star back in the day. In 2009, in her Los Angeles home, Murphy collapsed in the bathroom. Her husband, Simon Monjack, called 911, and she was transported to Cedars Sinai Medical Center, where she was pronounced dead after going into cardiac arrest. It was determined that her death had been caused by pneumonia and anemia, along with a concoction of like over the counter cold and prescription medications that were floating through her system. Now, what's odd about this case is that her husband not only initially refused an autopsy on her to find out what exactly caused her death, but he would also die about five months later of eerily similar causes pneumonia and anemia, along with tons of over the counter drugs in his system. Some believe that Murphy could have been poisoned, but the case has never been reopened. Joe Pitchler. Joe Pitchler was a child actor, appearing mostly in kids' movies in the late 90s and early 2000s. If you grew up watching the Beethoven movies uh, with, with the dog, he was the uh, he was in the third and fourth sequels. He left acting in high school and was planning to return to it upon graduation, but he went missing at 18 years old, last seen on January 5th, 2006, where he had gone to a party with friends. Pitchler's Toyota Corolla was found four days after he went missing. There was a no Note inside the car where Pitchler had expressed his wishes to quote be a better brother and for his personal effects to be given to said younger brother. His cell phone was also found. His last outgoing call was at 4 a.m. to one of his friends who he had been at the party with him. Police figured that Pitchler had taken his own life, although no body has ever been discovered, and the family was rather upset, saying not enough action was being taken in the investigation. Police never dusted his car for fingerprints, and apparently they didn't take much time looking through his apartment either, so. He's just been missing ever since. Next up, we have the original Superman. Not Christopher Reeve, George Reeves. George Reeves played Superman in the live action Adventures of Superman series from 1952 to 1958. On June 16th, 1959, Reeves died of a 
gunshot wound in the upstairs bedroom of his home. At the time a party was being held in the home, his death was thought to be self-inflicted. There were signs he wasn't doing well mentally as his career was kind of in a bad way. But there's always been some mystery surrounding this case. There were conflicting stories about where Reeves' fiance at the time, Lenora Lemon, was. Some say she was downstairs when guests heard a loud bang coming from upstairs, while others report her coming downstairs after the shot rang out, saying, tell them I was here, tell them I was down here. Till this day, there's, it's never been determined whether Reeves took his own life or if someone else did, either on purpose or accidentally. Number five, Marilyn Monroe. On August 5th, 1962, the renowned Hollywood icon was found lifeless in her Brentwood home at the age of 36. The official cause of death was declared as a drug overdose, but the circumstances surrounding the incident have generated conspiracy theories for years. Some believe that Monroe's death was not an accident, but an intentional act, that possibly someone wanted to silence her due to her alleged involvement with some pretty powerful people. She was rumored to have had an affair with John F. Kennedy and was involved with other prominent politicians. Others think she may have actually just taken her own life, but until this day, her death is still a mystery. Next up we have Bob Crane. Now, Bob Crane is most famous for starring as Hogan in the 60s sitcom Hogan's Heroes. He acted all the way up until his mysterious death in 1978. And there was definitely foul play involved, but the exact circumstances surrounding his death have never been determined. Crane had an interesting hobby. Uh, he enjoyed photographing and filming his adult nightly activities with various women, along with his friend John Henry Carpenter, a sales manager for Sony Electronics. Who I, I guess did all the cinematography. I've uh, never seen any of these films. So I'm not going to seek them out. On the afternoon of June 29th, 1978, Crane's co star in a play he was acting in, Victoria Ann Barry, entered his apartment after he had failed to show up for a meeting. His lifeless body was then discovered. He had an electrical cord tied around his neck and had severe trauma to his head. Police thought he was likely hit over the head with a camera tripod, but no one ever found that and no weapon was ever found either. The prime suspect was his friend John Carpenter, but there was never enough evidence to convict him, so exactly what happened will likely always remain a mystery. Number three, Kurt Cobain. Now these next three have been ex speculated on extensively. Kurt Cobain really needs no introduction, and if he does, uh, then you're, you're too young to be watching this video. Go listen to some Nirvana. On April 8th, 1994, Cobain's body was discovered with a supposed self-inflicted shot wound. Authorities believed he had been deceased for about three days when he was found. Cobain had also left a note saying he was no longer interested in writing or creating music. Now there were signs that Cobain was struggling with being in the spotlight. He was known to have issues with his mental health and it was determined that he had likely taken his own life. But there have always been conspiracy theories and suspicions surrounding Cobain's wife, Courtney Love, that she could have been responsible for his death. Now, I mean, there's t you can watch tons of videos of people going through these kinds of theories. I think it's just hard for people to accept sometimes that artists whose work they've fallen in love with and meant so much to them may not have had as much genuine happiness in their lives as you'd hope. Sometimes I think it's just easier to wrap your head around foul play. It just gives you someone to blame. Tupac Shakur. Once again, I don't think you really need me to tell you who Tupac is. Uh, this was another very big and well-known case that is still hotly discussed to this very day. On September 7th, 1996 in Las Vegas, after attending a Mike Tyson match, Tupac was on his way to Suge Knight's Club 662. While sitting at a stoplight, a white Cadillac sedan pulled up beside him and fired into the car. Shakur suffered multiple gunshot wounds with two striking him in the chest. He was rushed to the hospital, fought for his life for about six days, but he succumbed to his wounds on September 13th. And ever since that night, the question of who fired has been on every everyone's mind. Was it a gang member? Was it a rival rapper? Tupac had survived the shooting two years earlier that he believed Biggie and Puff Daddy could have set up somehow. And just six months later, Notorious B.I.G. also died in a drive-by. Whoever these shooters were, they have never been found. Finally, we have Bruce Lee. Uh, so an absolute legend. Everyone knows who Bruce Lee is. But if you are a martial arts or action movie fan and you've never taken the time to watch one of his movies, 
please do. This man is a legend for a very good reason. Now, Bruce was in peak physical condition when he died in 1973 at 32 years of age. He had met with a producer named Raymond Chow, along with actress Betty Ting Pai, to go over the script for Game of Death. Later in the evening, Lee had a severe headache, and Ting gave him a painkiller called a Quadrasec. Lee went to take a nap, but he never woke up. He was rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. It was determined that Lee had suffered a fatal cerebral edema. His brain had swollen up. He had collapsed two months earlier while recording replacement dialogue for Enter the Dragon, where a cerebral edema was also found to be the cause. But as to what actually caused this swelling, we're still not 100% sure. And after his death, several hypotheses began floating around. There's a theory that Bruce Lee had a curse placed on him. Another uh, theories that the triads could have had something to do with it. Lee had just finished making his biggest movie to date, uh, this time in Hollywood with Enter the Dragon, which some think could have ticked off the Chinese Mafia. And in 1994, Lee's son Brandon Lee, of course, also died prematurely on the set of his biggest movie, The Crow. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.